in audit preparation and planning, the next topic is auditing strategies. In auditing strategies, we will be talking about five strategies related to audit and these are forward tracing, backward tracing, discovery, horizontal and vertical audit. Let's talk about forward and backward tracing first. Before talking about forward and backward tracing, let's take an example where a product has to go through four processes. So let's say here we have input and then this input goes to process number one, which goes to process number two and then it goes to process number three and it goes to process number four. So there are four processes and then after this, this goes to the customer. Now what we do in forward tracing is we follow this process. We do audit as the process or as the item flows. So the examination or the audit begins at the beginning of the process and ends at the end of the process. So let's say if this is a manufacturing process where it is going through these four processes. So what auditor will do is auditor will follow a particular piece of item which goes through step number one and then auditor will follow that item to step number two and check whether the all the processes all the requirements related to that are being met or not. So auditor follows from point number one to point number four. This is forward tracing. The advantage of the forward tracing is that this gives a good picture to the auditor from the starting to the ending of the process. When you are a new auditor or you are doing an audit of a new process, it's always good to use the forward tracing because in the forward tracing, let's say you have a flow chart or the flow diagram which this particular component uses and then you follow that flow diagram and as the item or the product moves, you will understand what all is happening. And as an auditor, this will give you a good idea about the whole process. So this was forward tracing. As against forward tracing, what we do in the backward tracing is we begin at the end and work backwards. So let's take the same example of input here, then process one, process two, process three and process four. And then this goes to the customer. So as an auditor, you don't begin at the process number one. You begin your audit here at the process number four or at the end of process number four. So you begin with the end. In real example, what you do is you don't go through the receipt of material and then step number one, two, three, four. What you do is you go to the final warehouse where all the finished products are kept and then you trace all the requirements back and see whether all those requirements related to that product were met or not. So you start with the warehouse, you start with the dispatch section. So you first go to the dispatch section and from the dispatch section, you pick a piece of item. You look at the traceability of that item that this piece number is this. Then you go back to four and see whatever the records, whatever the requirements were related to that item, whether those were met or not. So in this audit strategy, what you do is you begin with the end objective in the mind and see whether all those things are being met or not. Forward tracing was good when you were auditing a new process because as you move along the process, you would learn about the process as well. But when you are doing backward tracing, it is always good to do this when you have a good knowledge about all the processes because you are picking a product at the end, then you should have a good idea that what should have happened before this. So this is backward tracing. So after talking about forward and backward tracing, the third audit strategy is a discovery method or the random audit. So here neither you begin at the beginning nor you begin at the end of the process. You randomly begin somewhere in the middle. Here what you want to do is you don't want to go through all the processes. You don't want to go through all the steps. What you do is you do a random audit, pick some piece in the middle of the process and see whether the requirements at that particular point are being met or not. The advantage of this is when you have limitation on the time because you really cannot follow all four steps or 20 steps a product is required to meet. If you don't want to do that, you can do this audit in the middle. To do this audit, you might need to have a flow chart which will give you a good idea what all has happened before that point, the point where you are doing the audit or what is supposed to happen after that point. This is a flexible audit and saves time, but 
for this definitely you need to be much more skilled and knowledgeable about the process which you are auditing. So when you are doing discovery audit or a random audit, make sure that you keep proper notes that what particular piece, what particular item, what particular thing you have seen, what is the revision, what's the status, all those things you need to keep proper record of that so that when you need to explain the problems or issues, whatever you have identified to the auditee, you need to have the full reference related to that particular item. And once again, you go for this strategy or approach when you are very knowledgeable about the process which you are auditing. So now we have talked about three strategies, the forward tracing, backward tracing and the discovery method. Another two strategies are horizontal versus vertical audit. So here you need to decide whether you are doing a horizontal audit or you are doing a vertical audit. Let's understand this with the help of this table here. So here I have ISO 9001-2015 requirements, ISO 9001-2015 top level requirements. And here I have number of departments which the organization has. The organization which let's say I am auditing has a sales department, design, production, dispatch and after sales. Now how do I audit this organization? One way to audit this organization could be looking at one particular component in the ISO standard, let's say improvement. I am only interested in improvement and I look at the improvement process in sales, in design, in production, in dispatch and in after sales. This is a horizontal audit. Horizontal audit is audit of a specific component of the system. As against the horizontal audit, the vertical audit is where you are doing audit of a particular function or a department. Here let's say example of vertical audit will be auditing production department and here in the production department we are looking at all the requirements related to ISO 9000 standard. So in production department we look at the context of the organization, we look at the leadership, we look at the planning and so on. This will be a vertical audit. So let's look at some more details related to horizontal or vertical audit. So here is the horizontal audit. Horizontal audit is also called as element audit method. Because here we are auditing a specific element. In the example which I was showing earlier, we were doing audit of improvement process in all the functions. That would have been a horizontal audit. In this case, we want to check if that particular element is being effectively implemented in all departments or not. So this will be a horizontal audit. Since we are doing audit of a specific component, specific element of the system, so it is much easier for auditor to do this audit. So auditor knows that what all checkpoints this person has to make. This person goes to different departments and checks those particular elements. So this is much easier for auditor. But the problem here is that what we are looking at is a specific element. What we are not looking at is what is the interaction between different elements. So that's a disadvantage. Coming to vertical audit, vertical audit is also called as department audit. In the example which we were showing, we were doing the audit of production department for all the elements of ISO 9001 standards. So this is also called as the department method. And we do the audit of several elements in that particular single department. This basically saves time because you don't need to move around to different departments and do the audit. So in one department, you do the audit of all the elements related to the quality system. Since in this case we are doing audit of all the elements in a particular department, the auditor should have a good knowledge about all the requirements related to that particular department. So these were horizontal and vertical audit. In real life, generally you do not have a very specific horizontal or vertical audit. Generally you have a mixture of that. So you don't go to a supplier and you do audit of one of their departments or you just to one of the element in the system. Sometimes you might do this in your internal audit because in internal audit of the organization, maybe one time you might want to do the audit of your production department. The next month you want to do the audit of your design department. In that case, what you are doing is you are doing a vertical audit. But sometimes when you have a specific issue, let's say a specific issue related to manufacturing, specific issue related to document control, at that time what you might want to do is you might want to do an audit of that particular element in different departments. So there you might be doing a horizontal audit. 
but when it comes to external audits generally you do not have a clear horizontal or vertical audit but it all depends on case to case so these were five strategies related to auditing so here we talked about forward tracing backward tracing discovery method and horizontal and vertical audits